So in this video, I'd like to map the muscle tissues of the rotator cuff. You may have heard of the rotator cuff. Generally, people think about the rotator cuff when they've torn their rotator cuff. In this video, let's talk about the healthy rotator cuff and emphasize the muscle tissues. So we have basically a sequence that we can follow around the cuff of the subscapularis muscle, the supraspinatus muscle, the infraspinatus muscle, and the teres minor. Don't be put off by the giant collections of syllables on the board. The words are really simple. Sub means under. So scapularis means of the scapula. So the under the of the scapula <laughs> muscle, basically, under the scapula. Then we have supraspinatus, above the spine. We've marked that out in the Bones uh, Landmarks video. Infraspinatus, below the spine of the scapula. And the teres minor, cute little muscle neighbor to those. So we have Mr. Bones here, and I've created a model. How handy. And the little pink ball here is meant to represent the head of the humerus. So here's the head of the humerus on Mr. Bones, and here's the head of the humerus on the model. You'll notice that there's a bunch of other colored Sculpey clay, and that is all in relationship to the head of the humerus. So what we're talking about here is uh, a set of a group of muscle tissues that cross the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint, and anchor to the head of the humerus. So let's have a look and we'll start with underneath the scapula, the subscapularis muscle. You notice I've made a number of fasciculi that represent the actual way this tissue uh, forms here and then it gathers up into a bundle and forms a tendon. Now this tendon is in red. Your tendons aren't muscular. They're uh, like a connective tissue fibrous bundle that's actually a beautiful silvery whitish color and that crosses under, you can see under the coracoid process here, and anchors to the head of the humerus. And as we kind of rotate our model around, we can see on top above the spine we have supraspinatus and infraspinatus below the spine. So the supraspinatus uh, tendon sneaks underneath the acromia, acromial process here, the acromion of the scapula, anchors to the head of the humerus, and you see there's a little gap there. So we're going to have actually a connective tissue wrapping of a kind of a, you know, a capsular material that's going to cross between these two. When we get to infraspinatus, we can see that the tendon anchors much more closely to the supraspinatus here. And so again, we have a similar bundling of groups of fasciculi of that muscle tissue. Little, little bundles that gather together, form a tendon. Again, the tendons are color-coded, but all the tendons would be white and silvery. So here's infraspinatus, right next to supraspinatus, and its neighbor would be the teres minor. Now the teres minor, when you're looking at an actual body, just looks like a little bit more, a little bit more of the infraspinatus, but anatomists have deigned to give it its own designation and we can follow its tendon out and it's very neighborly to this. And the three of these form a very continuous uh, fabric that's quite dense. And although the subscapularis is a bit further off, it's included in this, in this cuff, uh, and in this cuff of dense fibrous connective tissue that comes here to the head of the humerus. And maybe the gap uh, here is accounted for by the fact that the acromion is blocking any kind of posterior motion of the head of the humerus. You can't, the humerus can't go this way. It can't really go this way. It gets stuck by the bony framework that's in addition to the dense fibrous capsular material of the rotator cuff uh, muscle tissue tendons. Now, What's interesting about the rotator cuff, because of that sort of framework here of this dense connective tissue matter and this bony matter, is that the only way to get out of this joint is forward. And so dislocations of the shoulder or tears of the rotator cuff tend to happen on this side of the, sh of the shoulder joint because the, the, the cuff-like material or the capsular material is, is quite thin here, actually. It's because it's not, it's not representing the dense matter of a tendon. It's more just a covering and a wrapping of the joint capsule to enable the synovial fluid to have a home in here. This is a synovial joint. And so 
That's just a little view on your rotator cuff that uh, we can put back in position here and see its relationship to the, uh, Mr. Bones' body here. We just have to pretend that we have a humerus uh, in continuation with the head of the humerus here fixed into the joint. So I hope this model gives you uh, a better sense or any sense at all of the, what's meant by the rotator cuff and uh, where it's extra strong and where, where we might have injuries. And, um, and maybe you can feel that on your own body. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.